Welcome to the Arctic Com Group's Refrigeration Training Program. My name is Jason and today I'm going to walk you through uh, the video. But before we get started on the video, I'd like to just talk to you a little bit about the program, how it's structured, and how you're going to make your way in from A to Z. So we built this with six levels, three in the apprentice category, three in the journeyman category. In the apprentice, we start out at AS1 or apprentice step one. We have apprentice step two and apprentice step three. From there, we'll go ahead and move you into journeyman training. So we'll start you at journeyman step one or JS1, journeyman step two, and our final level of training is master journeyman. So each of these levels is supported by three to four classes. Each of these classes will be supported by eight to 10 modules or videos like the one we're doing today. Each of these videos will have a 10 question quiz at the end of the video, as well as a 50 question quiz at the end of the level. So without further ado, let's get started on AS2-1, Basic Refrigeration. Okay, in this module, we're gonna be talking about basic refrigeration or the refrigeration fundamentals. We're gonna cover the four basic components required to create a functioning refrigeration system. We'll break down what each of those components will do, where you can find them in the system, and their purpose. So behind me on the whiteboard is I did uh, just a diagram of the four basic components so we can kind of talk to it when we're done with this, we're going to take you over to a trainer that we've built here to demonstrate what's going on with what we see here. And then finally, after that, we'll take you out on the big system and we'll really show you all the different pressures, temperatures uh, of an operating system. So we're going to start today with our compressor. So a lot of times people refer to the compressor as the heart of the system. This compressor's job is to pump the refrigerant and compress it. <clears throat> so we're gonna, we have a suction and we have a discharge. <clears throat> so our refrigerant flow is going into the suction of the compressor the compressor is then going to compress that refrigerant and we're going to come out as discharge. Doing that is going to cause the refrigerant to flow throughout the system. So from our compressor, that hot refrigerant is now going to make its way to our condenser. The condenser's job is to get rid of the heat. It's basically a series of tubes. It's got some aluminum fins attached to it, similar to a car radiator. So if you're familiar with how a radiator works, we got a fan blowing across the coolant, right? We got a water pump moving the coolant through the system, keeping our motor cold. Same principle here, but no coolant, we're using a refrigerant. So we got this refrigerant running into this condenser. We got all those tubes, we got fans blowing across it. And what it's doing is rejecting the heat that we have in this refrigerant out to the atmosphere. After that, we're gonna continue on our way. Also, condenser is generally located outside. We're gonna hit our metering device. Generally, two types we're gonna talk about here. We have a capillary tube, and we have a thermostatic expansion valve, or TXV for short work two very different ways, and in later modules, we're gonna really dive into the differences between them and how they work. But for the purposes here, we just need to know that this metering device is gonna take this pressure and it's gonna drop it to a much lower pressure. <clears throat> so we're taking all this high pressure that we just compressed, heading our condenser, getting rid of the heat, coming down to our meeting device, meeting device is now going to lower the pressure again until we hit our evaporator. Our evaporator is what's going to be inside the display case, inside the grocery store, the convenience store, whatever. 
His job is to absorb all the heat out of the product. So it looks similar to a condenser, just smaller. So what we'll have is a series of tubing, aluminum fins, but instead of rejecting the heat, it's going to absorb the heat from whatever we have in that case, whether it be meat, ice cream, yogurt, your favorite dinner. Once we're done with that, process starts over and we hit back to the compressor. So in a nutshell, that is the four basics, how it works, and we will continue to break this down further throughout the video. <clears throat> so compressor. So our suction is going to be low temperature. and a low pressure. Right, it's going to be cold. When we get to this compressor, he's going to fill his cylinder up, kind of like a car motor. It's got a piston, cylinder, got valve plates, so we have an intake valve or a suction valve, and then we have an exiting valve or we call a discharge valve on the compressor. So now we're going from low pressure, low temperature to a high temperature, high pressure. Right? That compressor is compressing that refrigerant, similar to air compressor, right? We're taking a little bit of air and we're increasing the pressure, right, to do something for us. So then we're going to send that high pressure, high temperature refrigerant to our condenser. Condenser's blowing off, right? And we're going to reduce this refrigerant temperature until we hit our metering device. Metering device lowers it again back into low. So there's two sides of the system. We have what we call our suction side or sometimes you'll hear it referred to as the low side. Then we have our discharge side, or sometimes you refer to it as the high side. And if you look at it, this black line that I got in divides the system. Okay, so that's the four basic components. We looked at it now on the whiteboard in a 2D uh, drawing. So what I want to do now is show you this little trainer we built. So what this is re representing is what we just went over on the whiteboard. We've got our compressor. We've got our condenser here that's red. We've got our evaporator, which is blue. And we've got our metering device, which is a capillary tube. So when I fire this on, the compressor is going to start up. We've got discharge vapor, right? High pressure, high temperature vapor. It's going to run into this coil of tubing that I have inside this jar of water. It's going to get rid of the heat into the water, and we're going to have liquid coming out. This liquid refrigerant is now going to hit my metering device, which is a cap tube. This cap tube is just, all it is, is a very tiny hole which is going to cause us to reduce the pressure. It's going to enter the coil of tubing I have inside the evaporator, which is then going to start absorbing all the heat out of this water. And then we're going to go ahead and return it back to our compressor. So I'm going to go ahead and turn it on. You're going to be able to see down in here and watch our temperatures. So as the temperatures are moving, what I want you to kind of think about is envision what's going on inside the evaporator and the condenser, right? Think about what's happening. We've got this vapor converting to liquid, and then we've got this kind of mixture of vapor and liquid trying to get back to all vapor. So my compressor has started. We're going to start seeing this pressure start to climb, and you're going to start seeing this pressure start to, to go down.
All right, so here we are. We're at our condenser. So this, remember, the condenser's job is to go ahead and remove the heat, to reject the heat from the refrigerant. So if we take a look here where we talked about our pressures, you can see now we are at about 230 PSIG. Now, if you remember, we were about 70 PSIG at our evaporator. So here, we're about 180 pounds different between our condensing pressure and our suction pressure. So this is our discharge line coming from our compressors. It's running in. It's gonna go through these coils back and forth. Going from a hot vapor, we're gonna start condensing it down to a much cooler liquid. So I can barely keep my hand on, on this guy, and this guy I can just hold. So if you follow me back here, we'll show you. Our discharge is running at 145.7 degrees. That's the temperature of this pipe. I can barely touch it without burning myself. Then we got coming out, we've got our drain leg or our drop leg, and here we're only running at 103.3. So we're looking at about a 40 degree difference from the temperature of the refrigerant going in to the temperature of the refrigerant coming out. All right. Now the last thing I want to show you is the pressure here of my drop leg. So now if you notice, we're running about 230 PSI, same high pressure temperature as we did on the discharge. The only difference is that we've converted that vapor to a liquid. And in doing that, we're going to reject a lot of heat. So our drop leg pressure here is running about the same, 230 PSIG as our discharge pressure. So it's very important to know that the pressures are not gonna change within the condenser. But what is changing is that refrigerant going from a vapor back into a liquid. That is what's gonna cause that cooling effect where I can put my hand on this and we see that 45 degrees difference between our discharge and our droplet. All right, so that's about everything I wanted to show you on the condenser in this video. But before we leave, I'd like to touch base on what the condenser actually does again. Remember, his job is to reject heat. So he's gonna take all this high pressure, high temperature vapor, and he's gonna start cooling it, start condensing that into a liquid. By the time he gets to the outlet, we should be 100% liquid feeding our metering device. Okay, so we're here now at the evaporator. What a few things I wanted to show you based on what we've been talking about. So one, I've got my thermometer here and I've got it clamped onto my liquid line. And right now, we are 84 degrees. So what we're telling us is that's our liquid coming from our condenser and we're at 84 degrees. So now if we take that and we put it on our suction side, we're gonna watch a, dr a dramatic drop off in temperature. So remember, this is the output of the evaporator or a thermometer on the suction line. Next, we're gonna look at our suction pressure. And remember, the evaporator is on the low side of the system. So as this is going back to our compressor, we can see here that we are roughly about 70 PSIG. And if I had a port on my liquid side, I would show you the pressure, but we'll see the high side pressure when we get out to the condenser. So this here is our metering device. It's what's gonna separate our high side from our low side. And what I want you to pay attention to is the swing on the temperature. So remember, we've got this on the outlet and this thermostatic expansion valve is gonna open and close based on the temperature it sees here.
All right, so this is going to do it for our first video, uh, the four basic components of refrigeration. What I'd like to do in closing is just kind of touch base on some of the key points uh, that we went through during this video. So the first one, remember, we have our compressor. The compressor's job is just to compress and move refrigerant. Right, that's all a compressor's got to do. Right, from the compressor, we're heading out to our condenser. Right, condenser, oops. His job is to reject or remove heat. In our refrigerant. The next is we got our metering device. We saw two today. We saw the cap tube that was on that little demo trainer that we showed, the red and the blue one. And then we also saw the TXV or the thermostatic expansion valve when we were looking in that multi-deck case. And his job, right, is to lower the pressure of the liquid refrigerant entering the evaporator, right, and to maintain that level throughout the evaporator. Last, we're going to bring up is our evaporator. And his job is to do the exact opposite of the condenser, right? His job is to absorb the heat, to boil that refrigerant back into a vapor. So we can send it back to our compressor and we can start the cycle over again. So those are our four basics. Uh, thank you for being here. Uh, our next video is going to be on heat, so we're going to take these same principles and we're going to really dive into what's going on with the refrigerant inside the system. So that's going to do it for us. Thank you and take care.